Okay, so how does Amazon define what a VPC is? Well, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, or Amazon VPC, lets you provision a logically isolated section of the Amazon Web Services Cloud, where you can launch your AWS resources in a virtual network that you define. You have complete control over your virtual networking environment, including selection of your own IP address ranges, creation of subnets, and configuration of root tables and network gateways. Now, if you don't know what any of this is, don't worry. As soon as we get a bit more hands-on, you're going to learn all about this uh, in a very practical fashion. Um, you can easily customize the network configuration of your Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. For example, you can create public facing subnets for your web servers that have access to the internet, and then you can place your backend uh, systems such as databases or application servers in a private facing subnet that have no internet access. So you can protect your DB servers, your application servers uh, from uh, you know attackers by putting them in private subnets. You can leverage multiple layers of security, including security groups and network access control lists to help control access to Amazon EC2 instances in each subnet. And additionally, you can create hardware VPN uh, connections between your corporate data center and your VPC and basically leverage the AWS cloud as an extension of your corporate data center. And really what they're talking about there is hybrid cloud. So you've got, uh, you connect up your corporate data center with your Amazon VPC and you can extend your data center up into to AWS. So this all sounds a little bit complicated. Let's have a look at a network diagram to make our lives a little bit easier. And don't worry, uh, as we go through in the next lecture and build out our own VPCs, we'll keep referring back to this diagram as to what it is we're actually doing. So the red uh, line on the outside, we've got our region. In this example, I'm using US East 1. Uh, and then we have our VPC. So our VPC, uh, we're going to define, uh, in this particular example, we're going to define the IP address range as 10.0.0.0 forward slash 16. Now that uh, network address range is basically a private network address and um, there's a, a document called RFC 1918 and it defines um, three different private IP address ranges um, that's commonly used all around the world. So we have our slash eights uh, which are 10.0.0.0 and almost everyone uh, in the enterprise or and almost all companies use that as their in internal network address. Uh, then we've got a slash 12, which is 172.16.0.0, uh, and that can go up to 172.31, uh, and then 255255. Etc. Uh, and then we have our slash 16, and this is the most common that we actually use uh, for our home networking. So it's 192.168 and then .0.0, and you can change uh, any of the numbers after that. Now, in um, you, when we're using VPCs, um, we can only ever, the maximum addressable size that Amazon gives us is slash 16. So you're always going to use a slash 16 network. Uh, and most commonly throughout the rest of this course, we're just going to use 10.0.0.0. And as I just said, um, the largest network size that you can have is a slash 16. So we're always going to use a slash 16 network address. So let's have a look at how it all actually works. Um, so we have uh, two routes of entry into our VPC. We've got our internet gateway, uh, which is how we uh, connect to the internet or how the internet connects to us, depending on which way you want to look at it. And then we have our virtual private gateway. And this is basically where um, we're going to terminate our VPN connections. So we might have a site-to-site -site VPN uh, between our VPC and our data center, uh, and that will go through our virtual private gateway. Once the traffic comes in, either through our internet gateway or private virtual private gateway, it's then going to be routed. And how it's routed depends on what we define in our root tables. We then uh, basically, it goes through what's called a network access control list. And this is actually uh, sometimes referred to as the second line of defense. Uh, and you'll see why in the next lecture. Uh, and then we uh, basically go through from the network ACL, we're going into our different subnets. Now, so our subnets can be public or private. Public just means that they are internet accessible. Private means that they're not internet accessible. So the internet cannot directly uh, access anything in our private subnets um, where it can in our public subnets. So typically in your public subnets, you might put um, either your web servers or you might put uh, what's called a 
bastion host or jump box and I'll go through what that is in another lecture um, and then in our private subnets we would typically put our database servers or our application servers anything we want to protect from the internet so once we've got our subnets we then have our security groups um, important thing to remember is security groups and network ACLs um, can span subnets so you can have a security group um, you know stretched across two three four different subnets and then of course you can do the same with network ACLs that again they can span subnets and then finally we have our instances uh, so I want you to think of our subnet uh, we're always going to have uh, different address ranges so we're going to have 10.0.1.0 10.0.2.0 10.0.3.0 etc just makes it really easy um, each subnet is always mapped directly to an availability zone and I cannot stress this enough the number of times this uh, type of question comes up on uh, the exam whichever ex associate exam you're doing it is so important going into the exam remembering that one subnet always equals one availability zone you cannot span uh, subnets across multiple availability zones uh, and so just remember your subnets um, you know by their addresses so you're going to have 1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 etc and again guys if this is all sounding a bit confusing uh, as we go into the labs and we start creating our own uh, custom VPCs this gets easier but the one thing you must remember is things like security groups can span multiple subnets uh, multiple availability zones obviously same with network ACL uh, same with root tables um, but what cannot um, span a multiple availability zones is subnets so when you define a subnet when you define a network address range for that subnet it is locked down to an individual availability zone and uh, that's definitely worth a few questions uh, in the exam no matter, no matter what exam you're doing so what can you do with a VPC? Well, you can launch instances into a subnet of your choosing. They could be public or private. You can assign uh, custom IP address ranges in each subnet. You can configure the root table for those subnets and that root table is basically going to define whether or not a subnet is going to be public or whether or not it's going to be private. We can create an internet gateway and attach it to our VPC. Uh, it's also very important to remember going into any of the exams that you can only have one internet gateway per VPC. And you might be throwing some uh, troubleshooting questions saying that your internet uh, connection is running slow. Um, how do you boost this? And one of the answers might be something like, um, you know, you've got to, um, you know, add an additional internet gateway to double the speed to your VPC. It just doesn't work like that. One v uh, one internet gateway it can only be attached to one VPC. You can't attach multiple internet gateways. Uh, we also have much better security over your AWS resources uh, and it also allows us to create instance uh, security groups. So those are security groups that you are used to using from uh, you know previous lectures. Um, the thing to note about security groups is that they're stateful. So basically if you create a rule allowing HTTP um, you know into your security group by default HTTP is allowed out of the security group group um, whereas with subnet um, access control lists um, they're called stateless and basically if you create a rule allowing HTTP um, if you create a rule allowing HTTP traffic into your access control list, your network access control list, you also have to then create a rule allowing it back out again and that's uh, called stateless. And again, we're going to have a lecture just on VPC security because uh, it is quite important to understand the difference between um, you know, your security groups versus your network access control lists. Okay, so quickly just want to talk about default VPCs versus custom VPCs. Um, basically, when you create your AWS account, you're going to have default VPCs in every single region around the world. And the reason for that is they just want to make it easy for you to deploy EC2 instances uh, immediately. You don't have to and, you know worry about configuring or setting up a VPC Amazon want to make it as simple as possible so with a default VPC it's important to remember that all subnets in the default VPC have a route out to the internet um, automatically so that is to say they're all public um, there's no such thing as a private um, you know subnet inside a default VPC automatically you have to go in and create it um, each EC2 instance uh, that you deploy into your default VPCs is always going to have a public 
public and a private IP address uh, by default. And of course, you can uh, you know tell Amazon to just keep it as a, a private uh, IP address if you want. Uh, but by default, it's always going to have a public one. And then if you delete the default VPC, the only way to get it back is to contact AWS, and you have to go in and raise a ticket, and they then restore it. So don't delete your default VPCs if you uh, can. And finally, I just wanted to talk about VPC peering. Uh, we are going to have a lecture uh, dedicated to this, just showing you how to do it. Um, but basically, um, you can have multiple VPCs in a region. VPC peering allows you to connect one VPC with another via a, a direct network route using private IP addresses. So that is to say it's not going to go back out over the internet. Um, you can have a VPC um, that you have your um, monitoring servers in, that you have Active Directory in, that you have your antivirus servers in, almost like an administration VPC, and then you can connect that up to perhaps your production uh, VPC, you might have a test VPC, you might have a dev VPC, uh, and you can connect them all together, and that's called VPC peering, and it's done via direct uh, network connection over private IP addresses. Um, instances behave as if they're on the same private network, uh, and you can peer VPCs with other AWS accounts, as well as um, uh, other VPCs in the same account. So um, you might have a separate um, AWS account for your production environment than you do from your test and dev environment. Uh, you can still have, um, you know, peer those VPCs together using private IP addresses. Peering is always done in a star configuration, and this means that there's one uh, central VPC peers with others. You cannot do transitive peering, and again, this comes up so often in any of the associate exams. They'll talk about, um, you know, VPC peering, especially in the SysOps Administrator and the Solutions Architect Associate. Um, you just have to remember that there's no such thing as transitive peering. So what do I actually mean by transitive peering? Well, let's uh, start with this example. So here we've got um, basically five VPCs. Um, so we've got VPC A, B, C, D, uh, and E. VPC A is in the middle, and it is peering with VPC C. Uh, it's also peered with VPC B. <laughs> It's also paired with VPC B, VPC D, and VPC E. Uh, so if we want VPC B to talk to VPC C, um, basically we have to create a, a peer between those VPCs. VPC B cannot talk to VPC C via VPC A. So that's what we mean by transitive peering. Uh, and basically if you want all your VPCs to talk to, uh, you know, have the ability to talk to each other, you have to set up all the links individually. You cannot talk to one VPC via another VPC. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, there's n you cannot do transitive peering uh, with uh, Amazon VPC currently, uh, and that is definitely a very, very popular exam topic. Okay, so you guys have been very patient. Uh, we are at the end of this lecture. Let's just have a look at my exam tips. Um, so think of a VPC as a logical data center in AWS. It consists of uh, internet gateways or pr virtual private gateways if you've got a VPN connection coming in, root tables, network access control lists, subnets, and security groups. One subnet always equals one availability zone. I cannot stress that enough one subnet equals one availability zones. You cannot um, span your subnets across multiple availability zones. Um, security groups are stateful and network access control lists are stateless. And we're gonna have a whole lecture on um, basically the difference between the two, uh, as well as um, just general VPC security. Uh, and the last but not least, you cannot um, do transitive peering. Um, so you cannot peer one VPC um, to another via a third VPC, but you can um, peer VPCs with each other directly, uh, and they can be in the same AWS account or they can be in different AWS accounts. It does not matter. So don't worry if this has been a little uh, too technical or a little too heavy for you. It does get easier. You will learn heaps in the next lecture when we go out and build our own custom VPC. Uh, by the end of this section of the course, I really want you to be able to build out your own VPCs from memory. Uh, and that will really, really help you in the exam. And then you should be really, really set to absolutely smash any networking questions in the exams. And we will obviously at the end of this section of the course have an exam tips roundup of everything you need to know about VPCs. So that's it from me, guys. If you've got the time, please join me in the next lecture. Thank you.